Hello, hello. Dylan here. Welcome. We are back with some more Higurashi When They Cry, Chapter 4. I think we're finishing. Let me see what chapter. Okay, that's not going to tell me the chapter. I forget what part it is. We might be on Chapter 3 of Chapter 4, Sub Chapter 3. So, yeah. Let's just. I'm not going to go on and on, on right now. Let's just get back into it. The informant named Satosan had me get into his car before he set off. He favored the new roads and made numerous short left turns, checking if we're being followed. Yeah, you know, yeah, you know a lot about this. Checking to see if you were being tailed by some by making left turns was a rather classic technique. If it was just a single pursuer, you could confirm it that way. But if you were being tailed as a team, this archaic method wouldn't let you shake them. Of course, doing it anyway was better than not. I didn't hear anything from the boss as to who you are, akasaka -kun, related to the police. If you're familiar with checking for being tailed, the only other possibility I can think of is something like a private detective. If it's not something I have to say, I'd like to refuse to answer that question. My, my. Ever since we played Mahjong, you seem a lot more mature. I wonder where that hesitant person went from when we first met. I smiled dryly. Looking back now, I had to be a little grateful for being made to play Mahjong. Thanks to that, I was able to relieve some tension. Eventually, Soto san confirming that there were no cars following us slipped outside the city. We were on a pitch black country road, unable to see anything besides the lights outside. The only things I was able to hear were the hum of cars, air, of the car's air conditioning and the chirping of insects and frogs. I heard from the boss that you want to hear, that you want to hear a bit about humans about humans all village, yeah, like about the old houses known as the three families who control the place, or that right now it's pretty much the Sonozaki family running things. If you know that much already, I'll cut out the introductions. Then, if you would, can you confirm or deny if the Onogufuji Defense Alliance is involved with the kidnapping of Minister Inagai's grandson? Sato-san checked the rearview mirror one more time to confirm there wasn't anybody behind us before speaking. Last night, the Sonazaki main house held a family council. Did you hear about it from the base? From the boss? No. If it was a normal meeting, then it would have just it would just be all the relatives coming together over a nice cup of tea or something. But a family council held by the main house isn't quite so relaxed. Family council held by the Sonazaki main house. That would be a meeting between those who truly controlled him as our village. They wouldn't be talking about private family matters. It would be about the village as a whole. About organizing activities against the dam project. Among, the, among other things, everything would be decided there. In reality, they were deciding the fate of the village. At the head of the meeting was Oreo Sonazaki more or less called Empress Sonozaki, as the ultimate decision maker of the clan she was to be feared and respected. Infirm with old age, she was often unable to stand on her own, but her words carried enough weight to sway the fate of the village. It seemed that lately she had grown weak, and on days where she wasn't feeling well, remained bedridden. Family councils were occur that occurred while she wasn't feeling well took place with her on the floor. In the middle of a dignified Japanese style room, still in a futon, only the upper half of her body sitting upright, a certain look on her face. That was Oreo Sonazaki. Sitting next to her was her heir, Mion Sonazaki. She was still young. No, young wasn't quite the right word. She was a girl who remained childish. Her role was to merely sit beside Oreo Sonazaki, sometimes responding to her request. However, he was the only one deemed worthy to succeed Oreo. She had the same hawkish eyes, enough to give pause to anybody who, who so much as looked at them. Much was expected of her in the future. This granddaughter of the Sonozaki's, this granddaughter of the Sonozaki's leader. Also, and and also on the on either side of her sat several other important members of the remaining three families: the Kimiyoshi family and the Furuda family. The person listed the Kimiyoshi family was, of course, the mayor of Hinamizawa Village, Ki Kiichiro Kim Kimiyoshi. And lined up beside him were several more of the, his direct relatives. 
Opposite them sat the other of the third families, the Furida family. The Furida family was only comprised of the family of a Shinto priest, so the only ones sitting there were said priest, his wife, and their daughter Rika. Rika was doted on by many of the older folks in the village, and it seemed that Aryo was no exception. While the stress from just attending a family count a family councils was said to be enough to shorten your lifespan by three days, it seemed that Re like Rika was the only one exempt from that. No matter how char charged the atmosphere was around her, she paid it no mind. Instead, instead humming along, she doodled in a sketchbook. In fact, the night before, lying on her stomach while humming and doodling, she nonchalantly tucked her legs into Oreo's futon like it was a kotatsu. All this was the three families. All around the room lined row upon row were relatives of the Sonozaki family. The only ones who were afforded cushions to sit on were direct relatives. The others were left to sit in the, in the sa Saiza position, I don't know if I said that right, directly on the tatami mats. With Empress Sonozaki enshrined at their center, they were almost like a giant snake coiled around the room. It was decided that everybody would sit in order of their rank. The number of people from the Sonozaki family was overwhelming. The fact that the Sonozaki family held so many seats at a, me at a meeting where everything pertaining to the village was decided made determining where the balance of power was held in their families as clear as day. The number of members and attendants from each of the families directly reflected how much influence they had in ruling Hinamizawa. What was talked about at that meeting? Satosan, after remaining silent for a while, quietly began to speak. Was on our monetary gift of appreciation to the media a little large? Breaking the long moment of silence was the head of the Kimiyoshi family, Kiichiro Kimiyoshi. The Onuga Fuji Defense Alliance was in a business. There was nothing more. They were nothing more than a private organization pushing for the cancellation of the Hinamizawa Dam Project, with no reliable source of income. Fundraising had always been a problem. When they first started operating, they had managed to collect a sizable amount of funds through donations, but as the conflict dragged on, that amount was steadily declining. Is this in an era where you can get, a, get what you want just by throwing rocks? Very important, you don't underestimate the power of the media. And we want to borrow some of that down the road. The expressions of the people related to the Sonozaki family were so on. It was the one who suggested that they should borrow that power was the family head, Oreo Sonozaki. The battle wasn't just about force of arms. In the civilized age, there were civilized methods of fighting. Oreo suggested that creating a strategy incorporating the mass media, Oreo's foresight was spot on, and the effects of that plan, while well, at first unclear, slowly began to manifest. If the physical confrontation of the construction site was meant to delay progress on the dam by even one day, and the propaganda war using the media was aimed at attacking the dam project itself. At first, there were those who had doubts about that strategy, but there was nobody now who called those results into question. But in order to maintain those media ties, a colossal amount of money was required. As long as the amount of funds they had was abundant, things would turn out fine. It couldn't be argued that it was a massive expense, but the results spoke for themselves. But with the conflict continuing to drag on, the circumstances had changed. The head of the Sons like family, no, the one who sat at the pinnacle of the Hinamizawa's three families, Oryu, had suggested the idea herself so it was already untouchable, and continued to be allowed to drain from the budget. Nobody acknowledged that she so that it should be so allowed, but nobody could say anything. That was the price of dealing with the mass media. What do you think, Oryu-san? The only person who could object to a plan proposed by the head of the Sonosaki household herself was probably Mayor Kimiyoshi. Oryu, with a hard-to-believe expression on her face, as if she had severed herself from the fetters of mortal emotion, simply listened quietly to Kimiyoshi's words. But really, it was hard to tell if she was quiet, quietly listening, or didn't even have the intention of listening at all. Last year, we went through a lot of trouble getting people to wrap their heads around the price hike on the bulletins we were putting out. We convinced them it was just the one time. It wasn't 
It just wouldn't do if we had another one this year. Right. Fuerteson. The mayor looked at the priest and his, and his wife from the Fuerte family for affirmation. The priest gave a vague expression, avoiding a prompt response. And his wife gave her and gave her answer without a second thought. That's right. The cost of the bulletins are a particularly harsh burden of the poor fam for the poorer families. Everybody's dealing with it for the sake of the village, but it's, be but it's best we don't increase the prices anymore. The bulletin was, as its name implied, a bulletin published by the Onokofuchi Defense Alliance. It outlined the Alliance's activities, ideals, and resolve, but you couldn't deny the contents, or rather, piecemeal. That bulletin's main goal wasn't to inform people, but rather it was something to sell to businesses and people living in the village are connected to it, and using those sales to collect funds. In other words, it had become something of a tax. Of course, it didn't have to be said that this was one of the main sources of income for the Onigofuchi defense lands. Originally, purchase was supposed to be voluntary. But, but it in Hinemizawa, it had silently become the opposite. In the neighboring towns as well, it seemed that many businesses were buying copies just to avoid butting heads with the lights. The priest whispered to his wife to not say anything unnecessary, but was struck down decidedly with a cold glare. Carrying from the glare, the priest shut his mouth. The priest's wife, priest's wife always held the power in their relationship. That was because she was the one who carried the food day, but the bloodline. The priest merely married into the family. He was nothing more than somebody who adopted the name just to join the two families. Oh, I actually didn't know that. So Rika's father is j just was married in. Interesting. You should have been able to find a spot fairly high in the hierarchy of things, but the lack of authority in his voice meant that he had still not gained any favor. Casting a backwards glance at her rather disparent parents, Rika continued to do it whimsically without paying them any mind. Signaled by a look from Oreo, Mion brought her ear closer to her grandmother. There was there, something was said to her in a quiet voice. As responding with a couple of questions, with a nod from Oreo, Mion looked around the room and conveyed her grandmother's words. There will, there will no, f there will be no fr there will no freeze on the price increase for the bulletin. Is is that even in English? Okay. Kimiyoshi made a face like he had just bit into something unpleasant, but that expression quickly disappeared like it had never happened at all. But, but Neon chan I think you already know this, but the cost of the bulletin is by no means easily affordable. It's a burden carried by everybody in Hinamazawa. If we make people carry too much of that burden, also will collapse from, inside, from the inside. And who on the inside will start that collapse? Who? I didn't mean it like that. I'm asking who will be the first debacle. Being cross-examined by a girl who still had fragments of child childishness remaining within her, the words stuck in Kimiyoshi's throat as he sunk into silence. Yoon repeated her question one, once more, looking around the crowded room. Everybody reframed refrained making eye contact to avoid being pierced by her gaze. Those words she had spoken were unarguably said in proxy for Oreo. That's why when we all spoke them, they carried the same weight. But the look in her eyes was different. Like Oreos, they had a hawkish gaze strong enough that anybody looking upon them would freeze in the tracks and yield. But that gaze was, without question, one that belonged to Mion herself. This Mion would eventually inherit everything from Oreo, the day when she would stand up as a young and capable leader in her own right would come. Nobody wanted to believe, believe otherwise for even a minute. That's why nobody even thought of Mion as just some sort of little kid. Kimiyoshi? Nobody would lose her resolve over something like a price hike on the bolt. Hmm. Hmm. Kimiyoshi, while grumbling a little bit, made a gesture as if he... To say he had no objection. The expenses related to the mass media will continue. If those expensive expenses become too much, we'll have no choice but to continue the price hikes. Eon had rendered her judgment. Everybody bowed their heads, silently listening to her words. In the name of Mion Sonozaki, as acting head of the Sonozaki family, 
Hereby declare that all this shall be effective immediately. There shall be no objection to it, and any opposition shall be removed by force. Formal decree was read aloud, indicating her judgment. There would be no retrial, but there was a certain authority behind those words that even the courthouse couldn't compare to. When she was a judge, she would have banged her gavel, signaling that the matter was settled. Leon pulled out a large bell from inside her, her clothes and rang it. Everybody present could only prostrate, prostrate, prostrate themselves before the hard sound of the bell. Go back to the car? Yep, go back to the car. Okay. Well, that's a rather old-fashioned family council, isn't it? A young guy like you would probably find it hard to believe. In an antiquated place like this, these types of things have firm roots. It was exactly as Oishi had said. The old system of the three families had vanished and the Sonzaki family was running things by themselves. On top of that, the rule was borderline despotic. Was that the end of the meeting? No, there's more. I'll continue. Okay, we're all going back. Okay. Eventually, after ringing the bell, after the ringing of the bell ceased, there was a deafening silence. Within all of that, a lone man shuffled closer to Mion and whispered something in her ear. Mion asked several questions quietly in response. When she was satisfied, she motioned for the man to leave. The man who talked to Mion was a member of the gang that her father was a leader of. That organization had the entire area of Shishibane City under its control, so it was quite well known even here. Of course, this was talking about the criminal underworld, so it's not like just anybody would know. But, showing, but just showing a patch with the gang symbol on it was enough to resolve any dispute in the neighborhood. Ian's biological father, to Oryu, was Seth her, was her daughter's husband. The power of that man's gang was the driving force that controlled the dark underbelly of the Unga Fuji Defense Alliance. And so that man, from his position as the next in line to control the three families, continued to co coerce everybody around him with his unconventional presence. You know, in exchange for looked for their father, is it okay for her to tell what she just heard directly to Oryu? It looked like she was asking him that question. Her father gently but firmly nodded in his response. Mion you know, also nodded and settled up to Oryu and informed her of something. Eventually, Mion finished conveying her message, separated, her, separated herself from Oryu, and fixed her posture, waiting for Oryu to signal her response. It wasn't often that Oryu showed her emotion. That's why when she started to laugh quietly, a vague sense of uneasiness crept over everybody in the room. That's quite the conundrum, isn't it? Ki 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 ki. Oryu was laughing so happily that Kim Yoshi had to hesitantly ask, What is it, Oryu san? This land is like a mother trust, and the business with the dam is like somebody threatening our mother's life, isn't it? I guess, technically. Kim Yoshi, unable to comprehend the meaning of her words, looked confused. Oryu, with a white grin on her face, turned towards everybody and addressed them in a clarion voice. The minister behind the dam project is apparently rattled over the kidnapping of his grandson. That makes us even. Ke 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 ke. Wait, did they actually do that? I don't. I couldn't. Don't remember. That's absurd. Information on the kidnapping of Miss Minister Inigai's grandson shouldn't have leaked from anywhere. What did they know? I mean, we didn't know much about the kidnapping incident. Particularly, how did an ant antiquated household so far away from Tokyo come to know of it? It was a was a tranquil place, but I couldn't help but have that uneasy feeling about Himazawa Village. Oh, you should. At some point, I had mentally filed this place away as unrelated to the incident at hand. That mental paperwork had just blown away in the wind. How did the Onoke Fuji defense not know about that? But was son unable to come up with an answer fell in silence. I'm sorry. Please continue. Sure. The Minister of Construction's grandson was kidnapped? Or you thought, is that true? The mayor of an incident was nowhere to be seen in the newspapers or, or on TV. But in Hinamazawa, there was nothing strange about Oryu knowing something that the rest of the world didn't. Our pain is the pain of losing a mother. I don't think it completely makes up for it. The pain of losing a grandchild. <laughs> Do you like my old old woman laugh? You'll have to bear with that for a bit, don't you think? The last question was not just anybody in particular. It was as if she was looking for a consensus. The land and a human child are different things. 
I don't mind hiding him here, but I want no harm to befall him. The child isn't to blame. Make sure to keep that in mind. That means that the Onugafuchi defense on that was were involved in the kidnapping. Hmm, I can't say for certain. Why? Even though their leader, Oryu, has, was clearly giving orders on treatment, treatment of the kidnapped child? Lad, see, this is what the Sonozaki family always does. Always does? What do you mean by that? Let's say there is a particular problem. One that wasn't exactly favorable for the Sonozaki family. If Oryu shows concern over that particular problem, hearing that somebody who attended the family council would be helpful. As a result, Oryu's wish would be granted. However, neither Oryu or anybody else would know who actually did it. With this kind of clever little ploy, the Sonozaki family was unable to manipulate was able to manip manipulate events even though they had their hands laid out on the table. And that means somebody somebody who was at the family council was the culprit. Or there's a possibility that there was never a culprit in the first place. Oryu, Oryu herself in that room full of people didn't explicitly say that somebody pulled off the kidnapping. She was just giving her opinion. It was an odd and unpleasant secretive way of doing things. Were they involved or weren't they? I couldn't see beyond, beyond the veil. This much, however, I could say with certainty. This kidnapping was an ironclad secret. No matter how high a possible position somebody was in, they even they wouldn't know about it. There is somebody who would know about it. They would be connected to public safety. In other words, one of us. The only other options were people connected to the case itself. Including the minister, there would be people affected by the incident. Or the people that committed it. In any case, there was no way an old household in a place removed from Tokyo by over six hours of highway travel should know about it. Them knowing at all was already strange. A suspicion began to accumulate like falling snow. That's as much as Oryu said in regards to the kidnapping. Hopefully what you wanted to find out was in there. After this, it's up to you. I don't know what kind of work you're doing, but if you're going up against the Sonozaki family, you best prepare yourself. Oishi might be fearless, but even he's been attacked two or three times. He hasn't been wear he hasn't been wearing it lately, but at one point he was wearing a staff proof vest while off duty. Oh? Thanks for the warning. Now be careful. You speak pretty well. Are you from Tokyo by the any chance? No, I'm from no, I'm from America. <laughs> oh, okay, that, yeah, that was stupid. Huh? What's your point? Investigate, investigators were always close to danger. It was best not to divulge any information on myself. Your job. Could it could it possibly be somebody from the Metropolitan Public Safety Division? I couldn't remain silent here. It would be the same as same thing as admitting it. Huh? No way. This was unaccounted for in the money I got from the boss, but as somebody who played at the same table today, I give you this one as a freebie. After Oryu talked about the kidnapping, there was one other topic that came up. Another topic that Oryu brought up, and right before he told me this, Sato-san asked if I was from the Met Metro <laughs> Metropolitan Public Safety Division. In other words, what those two things meant caused a chill to run up my spine. So you see that in order to investigate the kidnapping of the minister's grandson, there's word there will be an investigator from public safety dispatched all the way from Tokyo. An investigator from public safety. They can't be reckless and make a big deal over the kidnapping. So it seems the Metropolitan Public Safety Division is investigating this on their own. Ain't that grand. Hmm. What is it? Rika, who I've been drawing... The entire time was completely uninterested in the conversation up until now. Looked at Oreo in an with an interested face as soon as the topic of public safety came up. Did the Metropolitan Police come? Oh, so Rika Chen knows about the Metropolitan Police Department. Very admirable. Who came? Is there anybody that knows what kind of guy from public safety came here? You know, his father raised his hand slightly. I hear that it's a nice young piece of fresh meat. Fresh meat? 
Is that nice and tender? <laughs> yeah, it is. Fresh meat. Ian's father smiled hardly as he answered Rika's question. Tender and tasty? Yeah, tender and tasty. Rika smiled with interest. Why did Rika suddenly act interested only when it came to this topic? That was a question that apparently nobody had the answer to. Does Rika Chama know something about this man? I don't know. After her rather flat reply, Rika brushed herself underneath Oryu's futon again. When she buried herself there, Rika no longer started drawing again. Instead, she was making an expression like she was deep in contemplation. What shall we do about him, mother? Neon's father posed the question. He had the type of uncouth expression on his face, indicated that given the order, he could snuff the problem out at any time. He came all the way to Hinamizawa. Let him take it easy for a while. They were saying to just let him go around as he pleases. Neon's father asked in response. Or, or you smiled thinly as she responded. Leave him alone, but if he starts causing too much mischief when that happens, don't hold back. I don't enjoy being taken lightly. Is what they talked about, apparently. It couldn't, it couldn't be that you're that fresh meat from the met Metropolitan Police, are you? You couldn't be. <laughs> the sensation of cold, bristling fear began to crawl its way up my back. Family council took place last night. In other words, yesterday. And today I was dressed up as a tourist hand headed towards Hinamazawa. My cover was already blown. And I remember the first person I met when I got to the bus stop. I couldn't breathe. Miss Rika. Miss Rika right here too. <laughs> the person at the family council who expressed interest in the man being dispatched from the Metropolitan Police, Rika Furde. Then the person who was waiting for me the whole time in the bus shelter, Rika Furde. It was an unthinkable image. No, oh, it was an illusion. When she met at that bus shelter, did Rika Chan already know my true identity? Did she know that I was As Akasaka, dispatched from the Metropolitan Police Department, and come to meet me? Then, including Mira Kimiyoshi, every villager that I met, everybody knew but just pretended not to? Because or you had given instructions not to interfere? Thinking about it logically, it didn't seem possible. I met quite a number of people. If there's people if there's people that are good at acting, then there's people who are bad at hiding things. If there was that many people, then there should have been somebody among them who knew I was from public safety and couldn't hide their hostility. However, I didn't feel any presence like that. But then even still. Why did Ori tell me to leave me alone? Tell them to leave me alone. Was it because they were careless? Because if they were careless about it, it would only raise more raise more suspicion? Or was it because they believed a rookie like me wouldn't be able to find anything? Akasaka is a coward. I recalled that strange voice which could only make me believe the rookie had been possessed. An unknown entity, no matter how you looked at it, knew my true identity from the get-go. And then, how did it get- how did it warn me again? That's right. It wouldn't mean to hurry up and go back to Tokyo. Instead of a realistic worry that the Onigafuji Defense Alliance had discovered my identity, the absurd worry brought on by the unknown girl st stuck with me more. What exactly was that girl? What was the thing I would eventually work with? That mysterious girl. Rika Furde. Let's stop this. Everything I was thinking of right now was merely conjecture. When I was first thing in the morning, I'll everything I heard right to issue and await further orders. There was no mistaking the possibility of that the possibility that the Unagovich defense violence related to this case was there. And that the fact that my cover was blown meant I was in a precarious position. But as everybody at HQ was already extremely busy, they may not be able to spare the support. Is that everything? If you want, I can drop you off wherever you like. Ah, sorry, in that case, the station where we originally met, please. A rural road where even a streetlight was rare. I couldn't see anything. I wasn't aware of anything but the asphalt that was lit up by the headlights. Outside of that light, was it simply darkness? Or was there something lurking there leading to strike? I had to think I drew the short straw here. I wanted to go back to Tokyo. For some reason, the voice of the girl warned me to go back to Tokyo. Warning me to go back to Tokyo still lingered in my head. At the end of this 
yes, it is. It is the end of the chapter. Mahjong Prodigy. That was part. That chapter three, and this is the second part of that chapter. So chapter, it'll be part six, I think, of Higurashi when they cry. Chapter four, and I could be doing like longer episodes, but my throat would be dead by the end of it. All right. Hope you enjoyed this one. Check out some of the other videos that I've done. Subscribe and hit the and hit the bell to be notified of all the future videos. And I have a couple of videos right here. Get to the end of the video, then comment Oreo, or as I how I've been trying been saying it Oreo. I can't I can't help but say Oreo when I see the name. So now that now there's probably two videos here. So hope you enjoyed. Oh, and hopefully you return for more. Bye bye.